Hi, in this video we're going to take a look at the editorial functionality available to you inside of Hero and Hero Player, looking at the process of putting together cuts using Source Record 3-point editing through to refining and tweaking edits via the modal editorial toolset, along with precision control via the keyboard and spreadsheet. So without further ado, let's get stuck in. For most from scratch editorial tasks, the editing workspace is where you'll start off. This offers a 2-up Source Record UI which will be familiar to anyone who's used standard editorial packages. The left source or clip viewer is where you'll audition shots, and the right record or sequence viewer shows your current playhead position in the sequence. This makes auditioning and marking clips to subsequently insert or overlay in your timeline quick and easy. Here I've got a batch of source takes which I'm going to run through, pick out suitable material and drop into the timeline to create a course edit which I'll later refine. So to start off I'm going to double click an item to open it from the project bin into the source viewer here. Scrubbing around with a timeline I'm going to pick a suitable endpoint and set it here. Now I can also scrub around in the viewer itself using our in-viewer jog shuttle controls by holding down the K key and dragging in the top part of the viewer to jog through frames and in the bottom part to shuttle through at varying playback speeds. So this looks like a good out point. I'm going to hit O and then I'm going to insert it into my timeline by right clicking going edit insert like so. Again I'm going to do the same thing but this time I'm going to use the keyboard to drive everything. First off, I can switch my focus back to my project tab with control or command shift square brackets, just like in most web browsers. Then arrow keys to pick a suitable item and command or control enter to open it in my clip viewer. This pops my focus over into the clip viewer as well, so that I'm immediately able to use standard JKL hotkeys to pick a good in and out point. So starting off, I'm going to hit L once to play back at one times. I can hit it again to play back at two times. J to slow it back down to one times. I reckon this is looking pretty good, so I'll hit K, stops it, and then holding down K, I can shuttle frame forward and backwards using J and L at the same time. So this looks good. I'll hit I to set my endpoint. I can also do single frame forward and backwards using the dot and comma keys, or if I add the shift key, it'll jump in the increment set in the viewer here. So that looks like a good out point. I'm going to hit O to set the out, and then I'm going to hit N to do an insert. I could have used M for the overlay. So I'm going to quickly add some more clips. Note that clips are inserted at the playhead position when there's no in and out points specified in the timeline. So I can, for example, jump backwards to an earlier point, grab a clip and insert it at that position in the timeline. or if I use the overwrite, I can replace clips. Using in and out points in the timeline, I can also specify points to fill there. So for example, rather than inserting at the playhead, if I set my in point here and do an insert edit, you can see it drops in at that position regardless of where the playhead is. Similarly, I can set just an out point and it'll attempt to fill up to that gap based on the region set in here. On top of that, you can also specify an in and an out point in the timeline. So I'm going to grab a new clip, specify only the in point here, and then rather than setting the marks manually, I'm going to go over a particular clip and hit U to mark that specific clip. Similarly, you can select a bunch of clips and press Shift U to mark those. So once I've done this, I'll pop into my clip selection, set an in point, and now if I do an overwrite, that'll actually replace those specific clips on the timeline. Very handy. Now, so far we've been letting Hero decide which tracks to drop these clips into, which is generally the lowest unlocked available track. However, we can also highlight available track headers like so. Pick ourselves again a section, clear my in and outs in here, and when I do an insert or overwrite here, it'll actually place it on that upper level track. In the sequence, we can also use JKL as we saw before, or the dot and comma keys. In addition, we can add Alt to those to get it to jump between particular edits. And if we select particular track headers, we're able to jump between just the edits on those tracks. In either the sequence or the viewer, we can use the small enter button found on your number pad to enter the timecode numerical entry box like so. We can now nudge values up and down using the arrow keys, just like in Nuke's numerical widgets. Or we can type absolute or even relative values in here to be able to jump backwards and forwards in the timeline hitting escape will jump focus back out to the viewer or timeline. So I'm now happy with the rough edit I've put together, but I need to tweak it. 
To achieve this, I'm going to use Hero and Hero Player's modal editorial toolset. Now, I could opt to do this in the two up view, but in this particular case, I'm going to switch to using the timeline layout, which gives me just the sequence viewer. The tools allow you to pick the level of control you require for the task at hand and are driven through this toolbar here. The multi-tools found in this first menu allow you access to a range of editorial functionality from within a single tool, depending on where you hover. For example, if I'm in the full multi-tool, if I hover over the end of a clip, I can trim it. If I hover over the middle of a clip, I can move it. If I hover over the top, I can slide, and over the bottom, I can slip. This gives us an enormous amount of power, however it does mean that we need to be very specific about where we click. The Move Trim tool, by contrast, only allows you to move and trim, which is very similar to what the FCP Selection tool allows. Hero's Select tool only allows clip selection, so you can't accidentally edit anything. The current choice of tools set in this top menu is remembered between sessions, so if you prefer working in Selection mode and leave it at that, then the next time you fire up Hero it'll still be in that Selection mode. The remainder of the tools available are all specific to particular functions, and so allow you to be very precise about what you're trying to achieve. They also control the default selection type used by the keyboard selection hotkeys, but we'll look at that more in just a minute. So first up, I'm going to tweak this edit here. First I'm going to mark my in and out points around it by selecting the edit and hitting Shift U, and then playing back in a loop. OK, I'm going to roll the edit, in this case using the multi-tool. When I hover over the middle, you see my cursor changes to show my roll cursor, and now I'm able to drag to tweak. As I do so, you'll see this pops up an overlay to show the new in and out points, which I'll get if I drop at that point. Now let's say I want to ripple out my first clip somewhat. I can do this in the multi-tool again by hovering over the out point, holding down Alt and dragging. However, in this particular case, I'm going to limit myself to just rippling by picking the ripple tool. So my ripple tool doesn't allow me to do anything else except pick up and ripple him out. Similarly, we can limit ourselves to just slipping and sliding using these tools here, both of which, when used, will show in and out point overlays. We can select clips forwards and backwards, both in a particular track and in all tracks, using these tools. So, for example, I can click here to select everything to the right. Also, a neat trick is you can drop this into Select All to the right by holding down Alt and then clicking, where the reverse also works in the Select All tools. In this bottom menu, we've got Razor, Razor All, and then Rejoin Razored edits. These complement the razor actions found in the context menu or on the C and Shift C hotkeys. Of course, both these and the remaining context items such as ripple delete are available regardless of the current tool selection. Finally, on top of the roll and ripple tools we just saw, we also have the retime tool. This allows you to shorten or lengthen a clip by retiming it, so keeping the same source frames, just altering the speed to match. Most of the time, for speed, rather than clicking into the tools, you'll want to pick them via the keyboard shortcuts. You can hover over to get a tooltip which specifies these, but essentially they're based across the QWERTY section of your keyboard, where Q is the first item in the list, W the second, and so on. Hitting the key in question once will bring up the first tool, twice in quick succession will bring up the second in the list, and so on. This is really handy as it means you don't have to know the current state of the tool selection to pick the tool you desire. In addition to tool selection and the panel navigation, playhead shuttling, and mark hotkey seen earlier, we can also use the keyboard to drive selections and tool actions. First up, to initialize selection, we put the playhead at the desired location using the hotkeys seen before. In this case, Alt and Common Dot. We then use the arrow keys to select the desired item. The down arrow will select the uppermost track item under the playhead, or the up arrow, the lowest. Because we're over an edit point and we're in the multi-tool, which allows you to work with both clips and edits, then when we press, we get the edit point itself. If, by contrast, I pressed up, I would get the clip. I can now jump selection between edit points using the arrow keys, both horizontally and vertically. If I add the shift key, I can even grow my selections. Or, by adding command, I can nudge left, right, and up and down. Similarly, if I select an edit point, I can jump between edit points, and I can nudge these to roll. If I add shift, it'll roll by the group increment parameter set. Now, as mentioned, this selection type is also dependent on the tool selection. If I'm in the Roll tool, for example, I can only select edit points. Whereas if I was in, say, the Slip tool, I can only select clips. By switching between these different tools, I'm able to set my selection on the next press of the arrow key. So if at this point I decide I want to have a clip selection, I can flip into my Slip tool, press right, and I get a clip selection. 
So all of this together allows you to select the desired tools, clips and edits and nudge them independently of the playhead, so giving you frame precise control over your edits. If you need even more detailed down to the numbers control over your edit, you can turn to Hero's spreadsheet view, which you can either create from the window menu or find in the conform layout. As the layout suggests, this is intended for tweaking conforms, but can be used for intensive, numerically driven editorial operations as well. As you'd expect, it provides a breakdown of every timeline item's source and destination, i.e. sequence, in and out times, both for visual feedback and for modification. Selecting items in the timeline link to selections in the spreadsheet and vice versa. Now you can click into any of these time code items and alter them on a case-by-case -case basis, or you can group select and alter by a relative value. In this case, I'm adding one frame to every source in parameter for the selected clips. All very handy for precise control. That wraps up this whistle-stop tour through Hero and Hero Player's editorial functionality, looking at the two-up source record views for three-point editing, the modal editorial tools, as well as precision cut control via the keyboard and the spreadsheet.